Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online instruction, you can click on the links at the end of the video. This is the narrated step by step tutorial for my painting End of Season. Hi everybody, this is Rick Sorwitz. I'm here in my studio and I'm about to paint, uh, start this painting of a rural farm scene. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. It's a, a, a pretty simple scene with uh, a few buildings and trees, you know, uh, a, a large area of uh, uh, kind of large grassy area, open field that's surrounding the structure. You can see a little bit of a, a, a kind of a, a, a cornfield or something in the background there and some distant trees. So this is a typical scene around where I live here in Northeast Ohio. And I'm going to uh, do a quarter sheet watercolor painting of this. So it's 11 inches by 15 inches. I'm working on a 140 pound cold press uh, Lanaquare off watercolor paper. And my board's at about a 20 degree angle. I just melt my, my paper with uh, masking tape and I roll it down with a, a wooden seam roller. And uh, I'll work uh, a, a lot of times working on wet on dry. Uh, I'll do some wet and wet brush work. And I, I frequently dry my, my painting with a hair dryer throughout my painting process. Um, so before I, I start my painting, I, I, I like to do some studies from time to time. And I just did a simple study for this one. Just looking at the patterns of light, looking and thinking about where the middle values are going to be, where the light lights are going to be. and and there's going to be some darks in there. So it's dealing with simple shapes. This is only about a three by four inch, uh, about actually about a yeah, two and three quarter by three and three quarter uh, little boxes that I put in my sketchbook. And uh, that, can, that will serve as a guide to help me plan a little bit where my values are going to be. So when I start my painting, I'm, I'm thinking more about large shapes. And then I start to come in and worry a little bit more about detail, but I, I, I look at areas like the sky, you know, the, the building shapes and the tree, this big open field here in the area and the, the shadows, and, and uh, that's kind of what I explore in my, my little value study. So with that, we'll, we're going to go ahead and get going, and I'm going to change my view just a little bit here so you can get a better view of my palette and the reference. So here's the, uh, the windows that I'm going to be working with in this demonstration. And uh, when I look at this, I'm going to start, a lot of times in my landscapes, I find myself starting with a sky wash, starting with some of the, the distant areas, a lot of time at some of the lighter washes. And uh, if you look at my photograph, it's, it's just kind of a, uh, a high cloud day there's there's a, a little bit of blues blue sky peeking through but it's uh, a pretty high ceiling that's that's full of clouds and i'm just gonna just paint a very simple sky for this i'm going to use a one inch uh, flat brush and i'll use a little cerulean blue i want to make sure i mix enough paint here to to, to do the job I'm going to add a little bit of royal blue and I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna and it'll be just kind of a light valued wash that I'm going to be putting on my sky with just a little bit of a tint of, of blue. So this is a one inch flat brush. And I'm not worried about going over uh, some of these tree shapes because I'm going to be my paint those they'll be a much darker value. So I'm going to I'm going to bring this wash uh, around uh, the edge of these buildings. And I'm going to bring it down to that tree line there. And on this one, I'm going to bring it down that building and 
some areas here where you're going to be able to see through these trees. I'm going to capture uh, the blue in some of those areas. We have a tree that's back behind uh, the, uh, this tree. You can't really see it. It's directly behind it. In my composition, I made it more visible, so I brought that to the right a little bit, so uh, it's something I can see. Now, that's a very simple light wash. It's, it's enough to tell us it's not the white of the paper, but it, it's not really a dark tone. And uh, I'm going to take a little uh, sap green, a little quinacridone gold perhaps, a little raw sienna, a little pyro red. And I'm just going to uh, work in some washes here while I, my paper's wet. Uh, to suggest some of these trees that are, are behind this, uh, this structure and behind uh, this tree trunk. Bring some of that in. A very soft edge and um, I'm going to put in a, some trees there just tree, start to show that tree line there but I want to get a little just a just a little bit darker with uh, this green and gold tones that I'm putting in there the reason I use the red is it neutralizes my green and drives it towards a more natural color Actually, get a touch of maybe some ultramarine blue in here. It'd be a little too too raw for me. I'm gonna add a little more red to that. have this kind of a grain elevator it's hard to see but I want to work it in now, I don't have to worry about uh, the paint going over the, the this rooftop unless I drag my brush over it like I just did um, because that dry paper is gonna uh, prevent that the continued flow of, uh, of paint and it's going to go where the paper is wet and the, the dry paper will resist the flow. Let's get a little royal blue in here. Some of the green. I'm going to add a little rose matter to this one. A little gray down a little more than my pyro red. So I want to get some of these not too dark, but a little of this while uh, the paper's still wet. I leave that alone. Now I'm going to take my, uh, just take a, a round brush. I've got a color right there that kind of tree-like and, and it might be a little, a little too dry 
and let this dry out a little bit. But that's okay. I'm just going to soften that edge with some water. So that's a tree line there. And uh, there's actually another one here that would be in the background. So now's a good time to drop this in. color here that I like. Quinacridin burnt orange. Some royal blue. So I'm going to put this here. There's actually a, a little structure in, in the photo. If you look close, it's kind of hard to see and it's very distorted. I, I'm going to choose to leave that out. And actually, the place where I brought this tree out blocks part of what that of that structure. So now I have my tree line going across, and I actually better drop this one down a little bit because it's a little too high to line up there. of that I even put a, a bit of a violet if I can find some here clean my palette a little here so I'm gonna take uh, a little of that it's probably a little too much but I'm actually gonna drop a little violet in here A little there, not too much, just a, just a, a little bit of an accent. And uh, I think I want to I want to create a little bit more texture in those trees. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna take a little of my spray bottle here, and I'm just gonna spritz some water, just a little bit. And it gives me kind of an interesting texture. Has a little blotting with this. So now I've got a bit of a texture there. Really move some of that. Distance. I don't think I'm going to be showing that. I'm going to just paint over that. All right. Now I'm going to dry this and I'm going to start working on some of these other areas. Okay. My, uh, my paintings uh, thoroughly dried now. I dried that with a hair dryer. And now I'm going to start working on um, some of these uh, uh, values, middle, va middle values uh, across the structure and, and, and even here. So I'm going to clean my palette. A lot of water and different colors floating around. I want to want to get that a little bit more in control. Got that clean. <clears throat> now I think I'm gonna uh, start to put in a wash on this barn and uh, I'm just gonna be working with a, a round brush 
So I'm going to take uh, my pyro red. One thing about barns is you want to try to not paint them like you're painting a barn. Like sometimes people, uh, they'll do a red barn and it looks like they, they had a bucket of red paint and a brush and they just went at it. There's all kinds of colors bouncing around uh, on a red barn. So we want to try and capture some of that. And, and also tie it to what's going on with the rest of the painting. A little raw sienna here. So some warm, some cool. I'm, I'm going to take some royal or some uh, ultramarine blue. Looks like I have a little something in that. But I'll be working with some violets, some toned down reds, some warm colors. And some blues so let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna to start to lay down a uh, uh, just kind of a lighter value to start and I'll do some glazing over over that red a little more raw sienna here The one thing that's, uh, you know, is important is uh, capturing the values. A little bit more of a barn red. Go back to some violets. It'll take a little of this uh, burnt orange, throw a little of that in there, so you can see that warm, uh, warm color in there. Uh, I guess I'll leave that. I was going to paint over that white, sh that, that rectangle shape there, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go with it. I do still want to try and get enough of some some red tones in here so it does feel like a barn objects here to go around so that's the front side of that oh, but I need to bring this down bit of a, a spot where the light is hitting so now I'm going to turn the corner. I missed it. And going with some, I'll get a little bit darker, maybe a little cooler on this side. So I've, I've changed the colors quite a bit.
So, uh, as I painted this, and I'm getting a little backwash there, that's okay. Um, you know, I'm more I'm looking at this whole shape. I'm not so worried about individual objects at this point. I might lift out just a little bit here because there's a there's a, some some boards that are a little lighter or, or something there, and I might try and indicate that if I can still get that out. If I can't, it's not a big deal. But just create a, a just kind of a light area there. All right, and we have kind of a gray, some kind of a of a gray down here. Go ahead with that. And uh, now. I'm going to look at this this building, uh, the lighter building, and I'm going to leave that white right now. But I'm going to paint the shadow here, and I'm far enough away from that edge that it shouldn't cause me any problems. And that's that's a little too strong of blue. I want to come in with more of a violet, gray, kind of a gray violet blue. and then uh, some type of a border or gutter I guess maybe standing out there that's lighter and now I've got this um, shadowed side and I'm going to work some violets in here So my, my main focus as I paint this is, is thinking about the values, middle value, light values, dark values, where do I want to be? And, and I bring in different colors, they could be, I want to say they could be any colors because they, I'm trying to make them relate to kind of the local color of the scene, but you know, I'm exaggerating kind of reflected light or just some of the suggestions of you know, light bouncing around or give me some different colors. I'm going to carry this, this, this value right down to the ground. So this is kind of a compound shape. This, this just leads right into the shadow on the ground. Comes out behind a little bit. So you know, I haven't got uh, real detailed or anything on my brush right now, but you can start to see the forms uh, uh, beginning to come to life. Now we have this uh, silo, grain elevator, whatever you want to call it here. It's kind of tucked in these, behind these trees, a little hard to see. So I'm going to give an indication of that. And my edge is dry enough here. I'm be okay to paint that. We're working with a kind of a grayed violet and some blues, some red violets. But they're they're the same. They're very close in value. So 
Take a little cerulean. And I'm just gonna get this whole shape. Front that is a bit of an angle here that has some shadow to it. So we'll bend that right into this other wash here. So this becomes one shape. You know, I didn't paint the window, the window, a board or a window or anything. I'm I'm looking at the overall shape there. And uh I think right now what I want to do is, uh, actually I'm going to paint this right here. It's, you know, this is, it's a dark, but I, um, I'm trying to draw more of the attention into here. So I need to, to be a, pay attention to how I paint this because I don't want this to be so dark against this very light white that this becomes uh, the focal point of my my composition. So I'm going to try to manage that a little bit. You can see that's a, it's a very neutral. a neutral and get something that's not as colorful. One of the best ways to do it is to go across the color wheel and get a complement or something close to it. All right, we're going to leave that alone for now. And I think I'm going to dry everything uh, so they can continue to paint. All right, I think uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is start to put in there's some brighter tones that I'm gonna, that's this, this distant field back here. I wanna pick that up. And then I'm gonna start to put kind of a, a middle value across this part of my composition. That'll start to really bring some of this out um, as I tone this down. So uh, I wanna get some of this off my palette to start. So I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold for that distant field. Um, it's going to be fairly bright. So let's grab some of that quinacridone gold. Maybe not, a little raw sienna too. Maybe I don't want it quite that bright. So this is my field back here. And uh, I'm just going to paint through all these trees because they're going to be much darker value. You can see that how bright that is, and it, it's I'm painting that on the, the white of the paper, and that's as bright as my color will be by painting it on the white of the paper. I get the maximum reflection of light coming through. Once I glaze over it with a color, I'm never going to get as bright as what I what I can now. So that's a little brighter than what my my uh, my photo shows, but I, when I dry it, it it's going to lose some of that intensity. And but I want it to be a strong band of of light coming and bright coming behind this. All right, and I see an area here where I want to get. All right, now I'm gonna take a half inch flat or one inch 
flat brush, wash brush. And I'm going to start to mix some of the colors I'm going to use in this uh, field, this open kind of open field that surrounds this. You know, there's some kind of ochre colors in there, and there's some greens. I'm going to tone these greens down. And uh, I want to get a little bit more of that raw sienna. I'm going to put a little burnt sienna in this. I'm going to put a little royal blue. And we'll take some of that uh, burnt sienna to that. I want to get kind of a touches of a dark neutral, earthy kind of a neutral. All right. So this, uh, still want more of a bowl. This, uh, this foreground here is going to be, is very, going to be very simple. Uh, I want to try and pick up a little bit the direction, uh, show some sort of a direction as I maybe just go in a little, at a slight angle. Um, there's a little more green as we get into this area. And we're just gonna take that all the way up. So I want to gray that down a little bit. So if I add a little red and a little blue, in essence, I'm adding violet, which is I'm going to gray that down some. Actually, I'm not going to go at as much of an angle. I'm just going to just a slight angle. here in the foreground. And I'll be coming back in to paint some of these shadowy areas. Take some of this, uh, let's see, raw sienna, a little ultramarine. It's probably a little too strong. Just gonna use the corner here and there. I just want to suggest kind of some of these divots that are that are occurring. I still want to give the feeling that this is there's there's some what of a linear pattern. I'm gonna get a little smaller brush. Here, we'll throw 
There's some smaller marks in here. I don't want to have too much water in my paint right at the moment because my paper's starting to get damp and uh, if I'm not careful, if I have too much moisture in my brush, I'm going to get uh, some backwashes as I'm starting to get right there. Uh, I have that big brush a little too much, a little bit there, but it's all right. This is damp. Scrape just a few areas here. Create a little bit more interest. have a little bit of texture to match up with some of what I have in here but I don't want to get too crazy so I'm actually going to take a little different approach here I'm going to dry this and I'm going to spritz it with some water and just lift off a little bit um, and we'll see what that gives us so let me let me dry this all right I've thoroughly dried this now I'm going to just create a little bit of texture so I'm going to take this bottle I'm just going to spritz I'm not pressing down all the way just trying to get a little bit of uh, this spray on my paper. Then I'm going to take a tissue. I'm just going to strike it. And you can see I start to get some of this texture in here, which, which kind of marries up with uh, what I have going on up there. I'm going to do a little bit more. Really kind of dragging it across my paper to create some of that texture and I'm probably gonna leave it at that and uh, now my, my palette once again needs good cleaning here and uh, next there's a few areas uh, that I've yet to paint with some of the values that I, that I want to find. There's some shadow here. This, this roof is actually kind of a, 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 a blue-gray, a little bit of a shadow on it. And uh, this is kind of a warm gray. So I'm going to deal with those right now. I'm going to take some uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to take some burnt sienna, and I'm going to mix myself a gray. This gray here on that roof actually has a kind of a yellow cast to it, or almost a green greenish cast. I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, hands of yellow, and. Uh, Get something there that I like almost just a little more of that. All right, so I'm going to paint this shape uh, a fairly even wash. There's a little bit of an edge that's light that I'm going to leave. Take that color down there and uh, let's see there's a little bit of 
create some more interest in that wash. Charge that a little bit with some burnt sienna. Then I'm going to add a little touch of ultramarine in there. Let those mix a little and cause a little discoloration on the rooftop. Now, this is uh, more of a neutral gray, maybe a cool neutral gray over here. I'm actually going to drop that in over the whole roof. I'm going to come back and there's a shadow there that I'm going to paint with a stronger uh, color. Get a little of that blue. And now rooftop has these all these ribs on it and I don't necessarily want to paint every one of them but I'm really I'm at the moment I'm painting the I'm painting the space in between and leaving a light a light area necessarily going to paint every one of these but I'm going to give a good indication that there's a lot of them and I'll, I'll let some of them let that rib just get lost in and merge with a another one but uh, I, I still want to give the indication that this is going all the way along the, the rooftop I need to make sure my angle is changing as I go back here in perspective. I need to rotate that a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've started to, to define a little bit what's going on there. And uh, there's an area there where I think I'm going to do a little lifting out. I have this scrubber brush and I, I want to show a little bit more uh, of the branch. I want to have a little bit uh, some of the lighter values on that branch. It's going to be a lot of dark, but kind of paint out over a few of those areas that I might want to reclaim some light. So this scrubber brush here that I have does a pretty good job uh, letting me do that lifting. Just put some water on it and... Good luck uh, with the Lanaquero that I, I like to work on it with lifting. It, it, it seems to do a pretty good job letting me go in and, and do a little lifting if I if I choose. 
and uh, from time to time I will. When I do florals, I do a lot of lifting sometimes with some linear shapes and marks I like to make. And uh, it works pretty well for doing that. I'm gonna have a lot, I, I will have some dark, uh, a lot of dark uh, areas on this tree, but I want to be able to maintain some of the lights there. All right, so I'm going to dry this. I'm going to start looking at a little bit more uh, detail. Okay, now this is dry. And I'm going to start to work in some darker values. I'm going to work with some ultramarine blue. Really a lot of the colors that I've been using, just a little darker mixture, a little more pigment in the mixtures. Some cerulean. A little raw sienna. And I'm going to start to work with this shadow, shadowed area, much darker than what I have it. We got a little area there that I didn't want to get. I'm going to lighten that up. I want to keep a nice line there. Continue around the corner here on this this side of the building. So that's a much darker area. And we've got a, a bit of a cast shadow here. Here, there's a few objects, a few different shapes here on the building. A 
indication of those windows. Now I'm going to get a little darker inside here. I'm going to soften that a little bit with some water. Just blot that, take away some of the edge. There you have this little window. It's just a gray shape. I'm going to just paint that. shadow being cast on this gray rooftop. under here. I'll break that up a little too to keep it interesting. And I'm going to go uh, a little, little darker here. crack in this where a board is separated. I'm just going to paint that. this corrugated rooftop where you start to see some of these little darker shapes. We have a little bit of that here on the barn on the, the rooftop. Back in here, this is a darker shape within this. I'm going to break that up a little. I'm not sure if this is a barrel or a a round barrel of hay here, but paint that in. So then we have a door here.
broken boards. Gonna take some of this color on my palette, maybe add a little burnt sienna, a little more ultramarine blue, some raw sienna. I'm gonna paint uh, some of this tree in. At the moment I'm using just my wash brush, but I'm probably going to switch to a round brush. Go with this number six round. This tree here that I, that I brought out. I'm still going to see all that because I'm going to be doing a little brush work here on uh, some of these trees. Some of this burnt orange and royal blue. Start to put some some dark on this. Try to get some of these areas while they're still uh, still pretty wet. I get some soft gradation going on of value color. Take a number six liner brush and do a little bit more. Ideally, you want to do these these attached branches while the main uh, artery on the the particular trunk or branch is, is wet. So it won't look as much like you just stuck it on there and that it's just part of the same structure. <clears throat> the same thing with a lot of overlapping branches from trees behind. 
when you see a when you see a tree, you don't a, ser a, a grouping of trees. A lot of times, they just kind of run together and start to form one large shape. Now I've got uh, some some other trees back here. I'm going to indicate. too strong with that color or the value of that. tree over here just now I want to dry everything okay this is fairly dry and now take my wash brush just kind of mix these colors that I have here on the, the palette see what I've got I really want to I want to get some of the it's more of a violet color so I need to make some room here I'm gonna paint some of the shadows under uh, the tree that down a little so I'm, I'm just going to kind of drag my my brush Violet. The shadow there, then there's a bit of a deeper shadow a little farther back by this tree. Lighten that just a little. There we go. So some of those darker tones around here. And uh, there's an area here that I want to go darker with.
cast the pistol. I got some of those trees are hitting that. Just ever so slightly. Now, I'm going to bring in some sap green, royal blue, or some reds here. Alright, so now I'm going to start to strengthen what's going on with some of these trees. Be a little darker behind uh, here, although I'm still going to go a little darker with the branches on the tree trunk. I'm just trying to go a bit darker. This tree is overlapping parts of that. I'll bring the dark over here. gonna create some broken edge textures I'm also going to 
create a few more um, divots out here. I actually think I want to go uh, a little, a little more towards the middle, middle value up here. I want to go a little darker. So I'm going to glaze over that area. Let's see what we have here. So really tone that down and I'm actually going to go over this shadow too uh, to make it just feel a little better fit and I'm probably going to come back after I dry this and uh, uh, strengthen that shadow a little bit but I think this is better as a middle tone tone some of these areas down dry this all right this has been thoroughly dried and I've cleaned my palette out now I'm gonna uh, start working on some details and uh, adding some uh, definitive uh, more definitive edges and, and smaller shapes and use uh, use some more line to describe some things and uh, I'm gonna start with the front of this barn I want to go a little bit uh, have a little bit more interest in here I'm gonna drag my brush down and go a little darker than what I have uh, but not all of it I'm, I'm just gonna try and uh, create the the suggestion here that we've got some, uh, you know, vertical boards here that, that this is constructed of. So I'm going a little darker, just starting to show some of these planks. And, and I'll come back with uh, some line on top of some of this some of the, the the areas where I'm I'm putting a wash right now or a bit of a glaze I'll come back and, and I'm going to start to do some calligraphy uh, type brush work I'm going to take this a little bit back here I'll let this one sh just show a little bit of that pale gray red violet here a little bit more than the front It's hard to really see everything that's going on in this. So we're just going to experiment with that a little. And 
Now, uh, there's some darker shapes. I'm going to mix a dark color here, a variety of dark colors that I'm going to work with. Uh, some burnt sienna, some quinacridone burnt orange, some royal blue. I'm going to mix some of those together. I have kind of a warm dark and a cooler dark. There's a little ultramarine. I'll take some burnt sienna and uh, get a more of a, a darker neutral out of that. So now, let's start looking around some of these areas and start to paint in uh, some of the details. This is a very dark window uh, within this already fairly dark shape. Uh, but I want to give that indication. Some kind of a dark plank or something on the roof there. And I'm going to go, uh, let's see, a bit of a deep red. Got a bit of a dark pocket here, some wine. We got here, we have a board or something that's loose. I'm going to go darker, try and have a little cleaner edge than what I have. line in that seam. So you can see that how, how much darker some of those values are. We got a board that comes up here. And uh, another one here. We have a cleaner edge on that. So some boards or something come up. Put a little bit of a some some linear marks here to show some of those boards. I'm gonna go a little darker underneath here. It have to be pretty dark. Going to carry under this. Start, stop, and start a few spots. So it's not just a one solid line. It's a little more interested, a little interesting. We got a bit of a an area here where a board or something's come loose, creates a dark area. We'll go a little bit more here. Edge is okay. Just a touch darker in here. Now I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little darker in here.
We'll make that doorway a little more interesting. Carry that up a little. And now I'm gonna go a bit a bit darker on some of these areas on this tree. bring in some more uh, branches I'm using a, a smaller liner brush Soften those edges a little. Now I'm going to take this. <clears throat> number one liner brush and uh, add some more of these branches need to get a little more paint actually first I'm going to take my number six liner brush a couple larger uh, branches that I want to get on there. Liner brush and get some smaller branches going. get a little darker shadow under the tree since I went a little darker with uh, the, the foreground here the middle with a more of a middle value I want to go a little I want to go a little darker here maybe a little too dark so let's see Take that all the way across, and then we have this area back here. A little darker, 
And I'm gonna go a little, a little darker on some of these trees. Darker here. This one's just a very light gray here. I'm going to follow some of the areas where I've left the just the indication of a, of a uh, white line, kind of the highlighted ridge of the or edge, and uh, follow that up with just a just a slightly uh, darker light a uh, light gray line here. To find that rooftop a little bit more, and actually. A little bit of a mark here. There's some some darker planks, and then some just some soft, just very light uh, lines to suggest the corrugation of the of the rooftop. I don't want to just outline all of them, I'm just give an indication. And there's a bit of a seam or a split that separates those. Probably not going to mess with that too much more. However, there are some boards. I like to give a little more indication of. Over here are some peeling paint. Darker line. Now, I'm going to give that a dry. All right, I think I'm going to go a little darker back here and contrast some of this these just slightly lighter areas a little better so I'm just gonna take a, a dark middle value in there and I actually think I'm gonna bring some of that into here a little bit Give it just a, a little indication of a few boards here. And it probably wouldn't hurt to do a little of that. On this, even though there's very little contrast, it'll be just a, a subtle linear mark. I'm just going to create a few divots here. Actually, in here, it's 
just enough to give some direction. Some dots and some dashes. Don't need much. A little here. All right, I think that's about as far as I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna put a mat on this, take a quick look at it. And there you have my, uh, my farm scene here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online instruction, you can click on one of the links appearing on the screen.